the President, Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, addresses the nation. Mr. President. Dear compatriots, it gives me immense joy to welcome each and every one of you, young and old, to this brand new year 2024. We must lift up our hand to Almighty God in gratitude for His grace and benevolence to our country and our lives in the year. 2023 that has just gone by. Though the past year was very challenging one, it was eventful in so many ways. For our country, it was a transition year that saw a peaceful, orderly, and successful transfer of power from one administration to another, marking the yet another remarkable step in our 24 years of, of unbroken democracy. It was a year you, the gracious people of this blessed nation, entrusted your faith in me with a clear mandate to make our country better, to revamp our economy, restore our security within our borders, refertilize our floundering industrial sector, boost agricultural production, increase national productivity, and set our country on an irreversible path towards national progress that we and future generations will forever be proud of. The task of building a better nation and making sure we have a Nigerian society that cares for all our citizens is the reason I ran to become your president. It was the core of my renewed hope campaign message, on the basis of which you voted me as president. Everything I have done in office, every decision I have taken, and every trip I have undertaken outside the shores of our land, since I assumed office on 29th May 2023, have been done in the best interest of our country. Over the past seven months of our administration, I have taken some difficult and yet necessary decisions to save our country from fiscal catastrophe. One of those decisions was the removal of fuel subsidy, which had become an unsustainable financial burden on our country for more than four decades. Another was the removal of the chokehold of few people on our foreign exchange system that benefited only the rich and the most powerful among us. Without doubt, these two decisions brought some discomfort to individuals, families, and businesses. I am well aware that for some time now, the conversations and debate have centered on the rising cost of living, high inflation, which is now above 28%, and the unacceptable high underemployment rate. From the boardroom at the Broad Street in Lagos to the main street of Kano and Nembe Creeks in Baeza, I hear the groans of Nigerians who work hard every day to provide for themselves and their families. I'm not oblivious of the expressed and sometimes unexpressed frustrations of my fellow citizens. I know for a fact that some of our compatriots are even asking if this is how our administration want to renew their hope. They are compatriots. Take this from me. The time may be rough and tough. However, our spirit must remain unbowed because tough times never last. We are made for this period. 
never to flinch, never to falter. The socio-economic challenges of today should energize and rekindle our love and faith in the promise of Nigeria. Our current circumstances should make us resolve to work better for the good of our beloved nation. Our situation should make us resolve that this new year 2024, each and every one of us will commit to be better citizens. Silently, we have worked to free captives from abductors. While we can't beat our chest yet, that we had solved all the security problems. We are working hard to ensure that we all have peace of mind in our homes, places of work, and on the roads. Having laid the groundwork of our economic recovery plans within the last seven months of year 2023, we are now poised to accelerate the pace of our service delivery across the sectors. Just this past December, during COP28 in Dubai, the German Chancellor, Olaf Scholz, and I agreed and committed to a new deal to speed up the delivery of Siemens energy power projects that will ultimately deliver reliable supply of electricity to our homes and businesses under the Presidential Power Initiative, which began in 2018. Other power installation projects to strengthen the reliability of our transmission lines and optimize the integrity of our national grid are ongoing across the country. My administration recognizes that no meaningful economic transformation can happen without steady electricity supply. In year 2024, we are moving a step further in our quest to restart local refinery of petroleum products with Potter Court refinery and the Dangote refinery, which shall fully come on stream. To ensure constant food supply, security, and affordability, we will step up our plan to cultivate 500,000 hectares of farmland across the country to grow maize, rice, wheat, millet, and other staple crops. We launched the dry season farming with 120,000 of land in Jigawa State last November under our National Wheat Development Program. And this new year, we will race against time to ensure all the physical and tax policies reforms we need to put in place are codified and simplified to ensure the business environment does not destroy value. On every foreign trip I have embarked on, my message to investors and other business people has been the same. Nigeria is ready and open for business. I will fight every obstacle that impedes business competitiveness in Nigeria, and I will not hesitate to remove any clog hindering our path to making Nigeria a destination of choice for local and foreign investments. In my 2024 budget presentation to the National Assembly, I listed my administration's eight priority, priority areas to include national defense and internal security, job creation, microeconomic stability, investment environment, optimization, human capital development, poverty reduction, and social security. Because we take our development agenda very seriously, our 2024 budget reflects the premium we place on achieving our governance objectives. We will work diligently to make sure every Nigerian feels the impact of their government. 
the economic aspirations, and the material well-being of, uh, of the poor, the most vulnerable, and the working people shall not be neglected. It is in this spirit that we are going to implement a new national living wage for our industrious workers this new year. It is not only good economics to do this, it's also a morally and politically correct thing to do. I took an oath to serve this country and give my best at all times. Like I said in the past, no excuse for poor performance from any of my appointees will be good enough. It is the reason I put in place a policy coordination, evaluation, monitoring, and delivery unit in the presidency to make sure that governance output improves in the living condition of our people. We have set the parameters for evaluation. Within the first quarter of this year, ministers and head of agencies with a future in this administration that I lead will continue to show themselves. Fellow Nigerians, my major ambition in government as a senator in the aborted Third Republic, as governor of Lagos State for eight years, and now as the president of this blessed country, is to build a fair and equitable society and close the widening inequality gap. Why I believe the rich should enjoy their legitimately earned wealth. Our minimum bargain must be that any Nigerian that works hard and diligent enough will have a chance to get ahead in life. I must hard that because God didn't create us with equal talents and strengths, I cannot guarantee that we will have equal outcomes when we work hard. But my government in this new year, 2024 and beyond, we work to give every Nigerian equal opportunity to strive and to thrive. For the new year to yield all its good benefits to us, as individuals and collectively as a people, we must be prepared to play our part. The job of building a prosperous nation is not the job of president. Governors, ministers, lawmakers, and government officials alone, our destinies are connected as members of this household of Nigeria. Our language, creed, ethnicity, and religious belief, even when they are not same, should never make us work at cross purposes. In this new year, let us resolve that as joint heir to the Nigerian Commonwealth, we will work for the peace, progress, and stability of our country. I extend this call to my political opponents in the last election. Election is over. It is time for all of us to work together for the sake of our country. We must let the light each of us carries, men and women, young and old, shine bright and brighter to illuminate our path to a glorious dawn. I wish all of us a happy and prosperous year 2024. May God continue to bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria.